So this might look like a Game Boy Advance SP, but I've actually replaced the internal circuit boards with uh, ones of my own design. And this is using a Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller and the same display that's in the um, Playdate, the Panic uh, console with a crake. And uh, this is just displaying some one bit art from Twitter users that I put on an SD card. And uh, this breakout board is from Adafruit and I made a little ribbon cable and some little PCB wings kind of located in there. And then on the back, it's got a bunch of expansion, which I'll show you in a minute, but you can see the SD card in there and a few other bits and bobs. But the idea is, is to be able to reuse the uh, case and the plastic. So if you want to kind of create your own little game system, um, this is a fast track to be able to, you know, have a supply for a battery, you know, and everything. And all the buttons are really uh, well designed and everything like that. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel? And so anyways, let me show you another game that I got for this thing. And then I'll disassemble it and show you the circuit board. All right, so I'm back with uh, another uh, non-trademarked falling block puzzle game. Uh, this is my game called New Blocks on the Kid. And this is the uh, enhanced HD version from the Artiboy. We have uh, different block sprites and fonts for the uh, encouraging words. <laughs> and it's got all these um, particle effects and everything. You can hear the speaker. Uh, it's got like uh, volume control. You can turn it off and. It's not a, it's not, how do you say, like tuned correctly. It's not on a logarithmic scale like it should be. So it's pretty much just an on off switch right now. But um, yeah, so this is a game that I made. And it's just kind of an example of the refresh. I think this is running at something like 20 or 30 frames per second. Uh, it should be possible to get 40 uh, full frame updates. Uh, and if you do partial frame updates, uh, 60 frames, I believe. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take this apart and I'll show you a little bit of, uh, a little bit more of the, uh, circuit board. All right. So we're back with what I'm colloquial naming the single board play. And this is the RP 2040 and the serial flash. Uh, that's running the show and got a lot of other fun bits going on here. So this is a dual USB-C. One is the dedicated hardware USB-C where you do the flashing and the other one is, well, it's just connected to some GPIO, but uh, because of the PIO in this thing, you can do what's effectively like a software, uh, software USB. And I believe it's fast enough for USB 2.0 and it can, you know, since it's software, you can do whatever profile you want. So uh, that's available. I haven't done anything with it yet, but that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's got, it's got charging and power on both of these, so you can, it's not to standard, it's just going to send out, it's just connect, the, both of these are just connected to 5 volts, so it's not actually detecting, so, you know, you can, theoretically, in order to output 5 volts, these should have circuitry in order to detect whether or not, uh, you know, as USB-C, whether or not it's a downstream, so I suppose it's prob a problem if you're, got a device you're going to be in you know injecting five volts somewhere it's not supposed to be so um obviously the trigger buttons uh the volume um knob which like i mentioned probably needs another resistor in uh like um parallel or something or like to ground you know ohm's law and stuff like that um power circuit charger uh, this is a neat little trick. This is uh, makes it compatible. This is an off-the-shelf part, but Nintendo makes, like, it's a custom part. And so even when you buy, like, replacement, like, to fix broken switches, this is the part you'll get. And you'll get it on, like, a little carrier motherboard so it'll fit the original footprint. Uh, but it's the same component, and you got to be really picky about where you place it. And it's actually a three-position switch, but you're only using two of the positions. Um, so very interesting. 
learning a little bit about the GBA there. Uh, same switch from the GBA. It's carryover. Uh, this is into the SP. Um, this is an audio amplifier. And then this is kind of the fun stuff. So, uh, you know, obviously I mentioned before this SD card. Um, and there's a reset button. One of these is a reset button. The other is like a user uh, button. Um, and then if you wanted to use either a Android headset or like PC style headset or a Mac headset, um, and you wanted to use the microphone in or potentially wanted to, because this is just GPIO, you could configure it in such a way you use it as like a link cable. So I could do I square C over this, um, unpopulated I squared C. And I put a little microphone on here uh, just for fun. I can't remember if this is analog or digital. I believe this is just an analog microphone. It could be MEMS. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, this is this is like the I guess the real game changer is this is the an M.2 connector, but it's in the same specification as Spark Fun's MicroMod uh, connection. So what you can do is uh, they make a bunch of different M.2 like daughter boards basically that you can plug in here. So you can have like a I designed it so you could. Uh, it's most optimally designed for an ESP32 like daughter board to go in here to give you a connection. But you can put in, I don't know, anything you want. I think there's like a Tencelia core that you can put in here. You can put like, you know, you could put, um, you know, another Arduino in here or something like that. You could just connect, use the GPIO and have like some sensors or something on here. Uh, but yeah, it's just basically uh, turns this into a motherboard. And Theoretically, the concept behind all the way this board is designed is that um, if this was sold, you could buy just the main board. I mean, with you'd need to have the USB-C, so this would have to be here. And this is done, by the way, this isn't a, just a standard uh, PCB. This is actually, maybe this is the standard PCB. Maybe I think I got it to work. I think this is supposed to be the, this is two inches. Oh yeah, to get this one, see, I don't even remember. I actually made all this stuff like two years ago. Uh, this board is two inches in order to clear the, the case. This, what? this one, I believe, yeah, this is just a normal thickness PCB, but I believe that when they sell these for the replacement PCB, they actually put a two inch PCB to bring this up. Cause I think this actually like, Technically, is an interference fit a little bit. So I think that's fine. But anyways, that, that'll be on here. But you don't need to have all of this stuff, actually. Like, it'll work as just this game system. You wouldn't have the SD card, and you wouldn't have headphones, and you wouldn't have this expansion port. But you could still do all, like, uh, the development, like, for this and this, and, you know, still use this. And so theoretically, you could sell this main board for, I don't know, I don't know how much this thing, I forgot how expensive all these little bits and bobs and these, because these are actually kind of tough to find um, to make the Game Boy compatibility. But this thing is actually pretty expensive because this isn't cheap. Um, this isn't specifically too expensive. But anyways, this thing would probably knock off, I don't know, $15, $20. So like if you didn't want to use this, you could save $20 and just get this. I don't know if it's worth making that distinction. Maybe just make just the one system. Probably just want to have one skew, but the con the concept, the idea why it is made this way, uh, was at least so you could functionally choose not to have this board. Uh, now, whether or not that makes sense for business reasons or logistics reasons, um, I'm not going to go through the trouble of opening this backside. But this is just a ribbon cable uh, that I had made in an Adafruit module, and as I mentioned before, this this display can actually have a um, backlight. In fact, the, like the first line of the data sheet says this display can use a data, like a backlight. And I think it says we don't like, we don't make it, you know, go make one or something like that. But anyways, um, this is a, this is a three pole connector that I found that's compatible. Um, that's like an off the shelf part. Uh, Nintendo has it. So it's only two pins. So I'm kind of like smashing it a little bit. So that's why that one pin in the middle is like smashed in because I'm over overextending the spring. But that's fine. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I would like to sell these eventually. And 
I actually did originally start this as a single board computer, but then I was like 3D printing all the case parts and the buttons and everything else again, and I didn't really like how it was looking. And then I saw that you can buy these cases on, you know, eBay, AliExpress for like seven, eight bucks. Most cases you have to get the spring or the, um, what do you call this? The axle? I forget what they call these things. Hinge? Hinge? <laughs> Uh, the hinges, have, usually the way that, I don't know why the industry has done this way, but the, the way that people do it is the case is sold separately from the hinges in 90% of the time. And then the hinges are the difficult thing to get as good quality because of the way that they're manufactured or whatever. But it's easy to get really low quality hinges. Um, I believe I have the low quality ones and they're, they're fine for me. I can tell that they're not as good as like Nintendo would want them to be. But I mean, again, this is, hey, what are we doing here? So uh, yeah, so if you like this and you want to learn more, uh, go to a single board computer. Um, actually, the forums are a.singleboard.computer. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a post up there. And the idea is, is that if you want to learn more about it, you can uh, give me a comment. If you're interested to maybe buy one, you can join the waiting list. Um, if you've got your own concept, if you make something like this, if you make your own homebrew game system, uh, or if you make a homebrew computer, uh, make your own post. Uh, I don't have all of the different types of um, processors and display types. Like I'm about to make the post and I'm gonna have to add the controller um, name for a tag. Uh, Cause the concept is, is anything that has a microcontroller and a display can, can be a computer, a single board computer. And um, by cataloging them and sharing them all in one website, one community, um, we can talk to each other about them and don't have to use other, don't have to rely on other social media channels. Like those can, those can be a, this can be a meeting place. So, uh, if you think that's a cool idea, go check out single board computer. If I was smart, I would have, it would be written here right now. Um, maybe I'll do it in post, probably not, but anyways, um, thank you very much.